Hello everyone and welcome to another very famous and a very beautiful chess game of Paul Morphy in the Paul Morphy's chess game series. And in this game Paul Morphy is playing with the black pieces and his opponent is Louis Paulsen. And this game was played in New York in 1857 and especially this chess game is one of the most famous and iconic chess games of Paul Morphy ever. One of the immortal games of Paul Morphy and probably every chess fan all around the world knows this game. Not just Paul Morphy fans, but every chess fan knows this very important and a very famous chess game of Paul Morphy. So this chess game is especially a very famous chess game of Paul Morphy and Louis Paulsen who has the white pieces, starts the game with playing e4, Paul Morphy played e5, knight to f3, knight to c6, knight to c3, knight to f6, bishop to b5, and we have four knights, Spanish game, Paul Morphy played, bishop to c5, and both players castled, Paulsen played, Knight takes on e5, rook to e8, attacking the knight. Well, if knight takes knight, then d4, forking the bishop and the knight. So after knight takes on e5, Paul Morphy played rook to e8, and then Paul Sen captures the knight. Knight takes on c6, Paul Morphy captures back with the d-pawn, attacking the bishop, bishop to c4, b5. Bishop to e2, knight takes on e4, Paul Morphy is getting back the pawn, knight takes knight, rook takes knight, bishop to f3, attacking the rook, rook to e6, c3, and in this position, Paulsen is intending to play d4. Well, if white plays d4, White is doing a good job. And we can see that White is controlling the center after d4. And also White needs to develop his bishop on c1. But in this position, Paul Morphy played a very important move. And this is one of the key moments of the game. Actually, this is one of the most important moments of the game. So Paul Morphy played the best move. He played queen to d3. And as you can see, white's position is very crumpy. What a clunky, what a crumpy position for white. Well, white can't develop the bishop on c1 and also this rook on a1 is doing nothing. And on the flip side, black can always move the rook and then develop the bishop and also activate the other rook. So black is doing a very good job. Queen to d3 was a killer move in this position. So probably the only logical move in this position is b4. So Paulsen played b4 and he is trying to develop his pieces. Attacking the bishop, Paul Morphy played bishop to b6, a4. b takes on a4, queen takes on a4, but still the queen on d3 is very annoying for white. Bishop to d7, rook to a2, Paul Morphy played rook from a to e8, doubling the rooks, and we have queen to a6 by Louis Paulsen. If let's say queen to c2, then we have queen takes on f1, check, only move, and then rook to e1, that's checkmate. So that's why Paulsen played queen to a6, so black can't capture the rook on f1, and also in this position, Paul Morphy played this very famous, very iconic move. And according to the resources, after that move, Paul Morphy took 12 minutes and he was deep in thought. He was thinking very deeply because he wanted to be sure that the combination was reasonable and that he had a four spin. In every variation, Paul Morphy wanted to be sure that. He is not blundering anything. He didn't want to blunder in this position. So he thought very deeply. And also according to the some other resources, Paul Morphy was a very fast player. 
he was spending a very little time for his moves. And when he was playing with the standard time controls, he was playing like a blitz game. But if he is thinking for too long, that means that there is some kind of a force checkmate. And that also means that his opponent is in big trouble. So Paul Morphy solved the winning line. And he played queen takes on f3, sacrificing the queen. And Paulsen, of course, captures the queen. And then rook to g6, check, king to h1, bishop to h3 by Paul Morphy. And at first it looks like Paul Morphy is attacking the rook. But this move is deeper than just simply attacking the rook. So Paulsen played rook to d1. If rook to g1, then rook takes rook only move and then rook to e1, checkmate. So Paulsen played rook to d1 and then bishop to g2, check, king to g1. Paul Morphy played bishop takes on f3, king to f1, bishop to g2, king to g1, bishop to h3, check, king to h1. Paul Morphy captures the pawn with the bishop on f2. And can you see the threat? Well, Paul Morphy is threatening checkmate, so Paulsen played queen to f1. If, let's say, d4, a random move, then bishop to g2. Checkmate. So Paulsen played queen to f1. And then Paul Morphy captures the queen with the bishop. Rook takes on f1. Rook to e2. Rook to a1. Rook to h6, lining the rook with the king. And Paulsen played d4. Finally, he is pushing the d pawn. And there's a discover attack to the rook with the bishop. Well, what a relief for White. But unfortunately, Paul Morphy played the last move of the game. And after that move, Paulsen resigned. Well, Paul Morphy played bishop to e3. And Paulsen resigned. And in this position, if bishop takes bishop, then rook from h takes on h2, check, king to g1, rook from e to g2, checkmate. So in this position, Paul Morphy is threatening checkmate. And the best resisting move for prolonging the game was rook to f2 in this position. But then rook takes rook, bishop takes on e3, rook from f takes on h2. King to g1, rook to h1, king to somewhere, and then rook takes rook, and white needs to resign. So black has three extra passed pawns, and also black has two rooks against a one bishop. What a desperate, hopeless position for white. So that's why, after Paul Morphy played bishop to e3, Louis Paulsen resigned. What a game. So this game speaks for itself. It's very hard to describe this very beautiful game. There is no words for this magnificent, brilliant chess game by Paul Morphy. Another very beautiful chess game by Paul Morphy, which looks like a piece of art. Paul Morphy played queen takes bishop on f3, sacrificed the queen, and then he made a very deep calculation and he saw the winning line, he solved the forced win in every variations and sacrificing the queen and also creating a very crumpy position for white was the brilliancy of Paul Morphy in this game. And this chess game was one of the perfect chess games of Paul Morphy. But we can also say that Paul Morphy was always playing the most accurate moves possible. And this game was just one of them. And there are many others. So this was the last position of this very famous chess game by Paul Morphy. And I hope you have enjoyed watching this video. And I hope to see you next time. Take care.